Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's, I think it's my third, fourth time uh, that I'm coming here in Athens for the Infocom. Still, I do not speak any Greek. <laughs> so I, I, my promise, I will, uh, I will work on that. It's my homework for the, uh, for the future. So, Hamia, just to give you a, a small presentation on what is our vision of TV evolution in the future, in the near future, actually, where we, and the main elements that I will underline in the presentation is the, let's say, the quality, the importance of quality in, uh, in, in overcoming even uh, a period of crisis as the one we are uh, experiencing at the moment. So that's where we started. So we were uh, just one satellite, zero platforms, zero channels, zero TV homes. And this is where we are now at the moment, 56 satellites for a real global uh, coverage all around the world, not only DTH services, but data, government institution, fixed, uh, mobile, military institution, whatever. And then 44, 44 DTH platforms around the world 6,200 TV channels, and then almost 300 million TV homes in the world. That's the progression we made in terms of reach, and you will see in the, form, in the following slides that we are actually number one in terms of reach around the world. We started uh, in 2011, we didn't start actually, but we registered 258 million, that increased in 2012 to reach the 291 million in 2013. If you see the, the way that the reach is spread over, uh, over the world, of course, there are the emerging markets. As you see the gray area in the... Um, I wonder if I can... No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, if you see the, the gray spot over India, this is increasing quite fast, but still you can see that the mature market is the one that is normally uh, painted by, the, by newspapers or experts in general, is still very important for us. 150 million households in Europe. And this is where we are, pl uh, we are planning the extra growth in the near future, mainly in terms of high definition quality and ultra high definition quality. So, as I said, 6,200 uh, channels registered. Uh, these are the last value we have uh, monitored the, the last month. And then of which almost 2,000 are in HD. HD for us is a driving concept. The quality is a concept to, to continue growing the market. And we will see that even better for when we talk about ultra HD. So this is the slide I was referring to before. This is in terms of reach the major uh, satellite operators. And then we, you see that we are far away uh, with respect to competition. And the main reason uh, that I think is that because we have so many DTH platforms and we have st our core business is, is really television and then broadcasting over satellite. So this, was the, this is the question we have asked us. This is not one of my picture when I'm at work. Is uh, and and we were really trying to think what can what are the the things that are appealing most the um, viewers, the TV viewers uh, in in general. And we have seen with the uh, with the, the support of our consultant, the consultancy group that we normally use, that there are mainly four uh, elements that are driving the request for the TV viewers. The first one is the viewers want more choice. That's a fact, and this is a, why also you see a proliferation of uh, extra channels, why there are so many thematic channels. This is the main reason behind it. Viewers want better quality. This is uh, the other element, the, to me, is the major element of our growth uh, strategy. And then viewers want even better quality. <laughs> so they not, don't even are satisfied for HD, as we were saying in Italy. In Italy, we are a bit far away with the adoption of this standard, but we're working on that. Um, but still, at the same time, you see that, the, that there is quite a good spread over the world. When in uh, some countries, we, we're still discussing about HD, there are other, other countries like 
country like Japan, where they uh, where they are implementing implementing the 4K Ultra HD, and they are starting to to validate in the 8 8K, the next generation. And then I said, viewers want TV on any screen. It's one of the other mantras, any anywhere, anytime, on any device. This is the same principle, just took it over on the, on, for TV application. So we, we, we have uh, monitored what is the viewer's experience uh, with respect to television. And the good thing is that there is still an increase in terms of uh, uh, viewing time, year by year. It's not true that the uh, linear TV is losing uh, appeal. We still have uh, more uh, an increase in terms of viewing experience. What is true that is that this, we have a sort of hybrid uh, experience where all, where the viewers, at the same time while he was watching television, is also uh, exchanging via the social feeds. And this is the progression we have observed uh, in the world. So we see that actually the, the good trend is that we are, in terms of uh, averaging uh, viewing time, Europe is better than the, the rest of the world. And then Greece is even better of uh, Europe. So, so there is a trend also established in Greece where uh, viewing time is a positive uh, element and is an appreciated uh, element of uh, the experience. And then, as I said before, we viewers want more choice. The thematic channel are the main uh, reason uh, for that. Uh, and this is something that you see, especially, or we have seen, especially at the switchover from uh, analogs to digital. We had very few channels at the time of the, even I'm talking of national broadcasters, very few channels in the offering uh, provided in Italy. And then as soon as the digital switchover uh, increased the, the efficiency of the spectrum, and then we have th this proliferation that is not just the uh, occup occupancy of the bandwidth, but is more dictated by the, really the, let's say, the segmentation of the viewers that want, uh, on one side, they want to have more focused uh, TV channels, so sort of uh, thematic channels. On the other side, there is the advertising sector that uh, price much more the, uh, the profiled uh, uh, viewers more than the generic viewers because advertising then is more efficient. This is just to show you that actually these are the major, uh, one, uh, two of the major drivers of our plant growth. And indeed, the, the, uh, the increase in terms of uh, channels is part of our growth. So we are planning to have an extra 50, 5000 TV channels by 2015. Viewer, viewers want better quality, as I said. So this is a graph that shows uh, how is the, the progression, or how, yes, the progression, first of all, in terms of HD watching over Europe. But what is good, at least uh, what is speaking, is that the blue area that is the one related to satellite broadcasting is taking a considerable part of the of the broadcasting and this is and there's a reason for that because uh, in in countries like with a very orographic profile like in Italy for example but I'm expecting also in Greece there is a, a the difference of the the costs for implementing a service a DTH service uh, over DTT is 10 times higher than on satellite so you can do it for some channels, but when you have large requirements, especially in terms of uh, HD, then it makes sense that uh, you switch over to satellite. This is uh, instead a, um, a graph that shows the, still the progression in terms of, uh, in terms of um, homes watching HD in Europe. And then uh, the, um, the blue part still present uh, how many viewers are uh, currently pointed at, uh, at our orbital position. Just to remember or remind you uh, that in Europe, our major DTH position are at 19.2, is, is the major, by the way, orbital position in general. And then we have also another uh, orbital pro uh, position that we are uh, uh, creating for uh, special markets, and that's are 23.5 and also 31.5. 
Then we were saying that viewers want even better quality, and, and there you see that actually this, uh, this prediction are quite challenging because predicting that by 2025, and these are part of our long-term strategy, we will add 1,000 UHD channels. It, it, the way I see it, it is uh, challenging. As a, for the same uh, reason, we project almost 500 million of homes that will be equipped for uh, ultra, ultra HD. What I can tell you that uh, already in, the, in, our, in, in our markets in Germany, in Italy, the rollout of the new set of boxes are already including the HEVC, for example. Ultra HD is not there yet, but it will come in the next month. So it is uh, the, the, the Ultra HD in some way we, we will maybe even go faster than HD, the adoption. And this is actually a, a page that sum up why uh, the, I mean, viewers want even better quality than what they will, current, that they will expect by adopting just HD. There are, there you can see there are different reasons for that. But I think one of the, the major ones, the, well, of course, the, the experience is part of that. If you see, uh, as you have seen very likely, uh, a live uh, uh, broadcasting of in Ultra HD, it's really a new experience, is very close to 3D and actually 3D is gonna be improved. 3D, in my view, is not dead. 3D was dead at the time of when HD was uh, only available, but with the auto stereoscopy that will improve very much and will easy the adoption of 3D, 3D will come back again. We will see if, I, if my prediction is correct. But what is more important is the, uh, this part here, this frame, because in this frame, this shows in a nutshell what is our effort and what is our strategy in terms of cooperation with the industry. When we adopted Ultra HD, of course, everybody would uh, reason that uh, any satellite operator is happy when, he is supposed, when there is requirement for higher bandwidth. But we were the first satellite operator in Europe that imposed that Ultra HD could be uh, developed only with the use of the HEVC, not with AVC, with the MPEG-4. And we did that against our uh, interest, short-term interest, because the HEVC implementation will reduce the, the capacity uh, requirement for any application. So in the short term, we will lose some, uh, some business. But we thought that would made no sense of proposing new business with the uh, with requirement of one transponder just to broadcast a new channel that makes no uh, business, uh, or let's say no economic uh, reasons, but instead you need to, pr to provide something that also works at the PNA, PHL level. And then the, the fourth element was viewers want TV on any screen. So what we developed, there again, there is a close partnership we try to have uh, with the value chain. And, uh, and we understood that uh, one of, as also we have seen uh, in other uh, panel that we have uh, uh, experienced a few minutes ago, that one of the element of viewing experience now is that the, the TV content in a household is available on any device, and most of the time, at least I see from my family, but also from the, what we're monitoring, this is conveyed, this is transformed from the antenna up to the device uh, via, not from the antenna, let's say, from the router uh, via wireless network. So there is a, and indeed, pay TV operators are developing network especially IPTV network with all the bottleneck that you have, just to provide this extra access to, to mobile device. So what we thought is that this, this was unnecessary to go through the uh, terrestrial network just to take the burden of being congested inside the other data traffic. And we thought that a smarter solution would have been to have the uh, the contents delivered directly from the antenna, the RF, uh, the, uh, the satellite antenna, via, of course, via a, a router, directly to the device. And this is why we developed together with the industry uh, a new concept that is the sat satellite IP. This is a router that actually can uh, 
first of all, <laughs> the, the first thing to be done is that at the exit of the antenna, you need to convert the exit into IP. Then the, the IP is streamed into the, into the router. And then from the router, the device access all the actually all the bouquet, all the offering that you have available in the antenna without suffering any problems in, with the latency of the, of, the, um, of the internet line or even with the capability. And then also not blocking the extra activity that you normally should be doing like internet browsing, internet surfing. And, and this is something we, we thought was going to help the industry to move forward. Indeed, the first uh, units are already in, the, in magazines in Germany. Germany is very much advanced in this respect, but also other uh, major PATV operators like Skies in Italy or Biscay B are watching and implementing this, uh, this concept that can be also implemented in a PATV model, so also with cryptid uh, uh, contents. Now, in a nutshell, I, I want to present you the Greek TV market uh, uh, results. So, as you can see, satellite completely digi digitalized, the, the blue uh, ring, and then also IPTV, of course. And uh, to be expected, that the one in the middle, the terrestrial, is, in the, is on, on its way to be digi digitalized in the, in the switchover. This is just to show you that uh, satellite in Greece, it is quite important, and uh, HD is, is an important, uh, HD is well broadcasted via satellite. 61% of all Greek satellite homes are watching uh, HD, that is already a good, uh, good figure. In Italy we are at about 90%, but we started a few years before in terms of a switchover, so I think it's a very good uh, indication, this one for you and for your market. And this is in terms of uh, satellite uh, uh, reach in, uh, in Greece. We have a 0.45 uh, million uh, that are reached directly via DTH and uh, 0 0.09 via uh, IPTV. So this is, this is the last slide. These are the major drivers that we think uh, can help the, the television business to move forward, to continue to grow the way we are experienced and we have experienced in the, in the past. So we need to support, in terms of satellite, uh, multi-channels uh, platforms. And in this respect, we are very much proactive. Uh, we have created, uh, we have uh, integrated vertically uh, two or three experience, even in, so in South Africa, to create our own pay TV platform so to help fostering the, the market in this respect. And this is the first part. In the second part, as you maybe know, we have created uh, HD Plus platform in Germany just to help the private broadcaster to have uh, an, a, a platform that was completely dedicated only to HD contents. And then so uh, support uh, also really be engaged in the development of new technology like Ultra HD, even if this can have an impact in the short term, as I said, because once the HEVC will be there, the, 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 the greater efficiency of the spectrum will be for any type of services, but start with the right approach in terms of with a, a sound business uh, for even for 4K. And then take into account the, the mobi mobility requirement where television should be, um, should be available in any, by any means. So of course, in a household, it's by a satellite IP. In the rest of the world, our role is to provide backhauling services wherever is required. And with this one, I finished my presentation. Sorry if it, took, uh, if it took longer than expected. It was very useful. Thank you very much, Mr. Guerrieri.